Welcome to Greed Watch 2018, a Common Rider O's recap podcast. My name's Coriander Dickinson, and I have with me Josh A. Kagan. <coughs> uh oh. But not for long. Oh no. Fingers crossed. Oh, somebody's somebody's got the COVID. And we record these a couple weeks in advance, so now I'm just hoping that that's extra fucking funny when I'm just, like, being brung out your deads in a couple weeks. Mm. I find it funny because I ended up watching The Leftovers because of you, and oh. Oh, that uh, fucking people show. have been comparing the 2% with The Leftovers. Oh. It's very different, please. Yeah, I, I it's watched the whole show, different. it's very different. <laughs> Wait, uh, the, two, the 2%? Mortality rate. Oh. Uh, that's like when the British Prime Minister got outed for having put his nether regions in a dead pig's mouth and people were comparing it to Black Mirror. And I'm like, it's, you know, there's really only like the two similarities in that it's a British Prime Minister and a pig. And the context is real different otherwise. Hey, oh, by the way, that's uh, Adam Wasserman, everybody. I don't know. Oh, hi. Yes. Him. Hi. Hey, hi. Hello. And now just a, just a quick question. Well, hey, Adam, what the fuck are you talking about? Um, which part? David Cameron was in a uh, university and there was a frat and they got drunk and he stuck his dick in a pig's mouth. Is this, and new, it was, is this new news or is this something I should Oh, this known? is like three or four years ago. Oh, okay. This is like three or four prime ministers ago. I they they go story. through a lot of them. Hey, guys. Yes? Guess what? It's time for... It, by popular demand, I'm bringing back the popular segment. Can you tell me what this common writer's name is? Oh. All right. All right. I'm going to put I'm it in the chat. Wait, wait Corey, you, you just did it, right? Ha, <laughs> ha. Uh, not this one. The one The one that is part of the, the pop quiz. Yeah. Are, y'all, that I didn't are you ready? Study I'm going to hit enter. All right. Oh, I can't okay. wait. All right. Okay. For our listeners at home. Uh, the name of this common writer, as typed out, is Common Writer Five Five Five. I should have done that after. It kind of anyway. Go ahead. Well, now I know the answer. No, I'm just I'm just reading off what I typed. Oh, I see. I Josh. should be looking at the chat. Yeah. It's uh, Common Writer Five Five Five. Yeah. Okay. Fine. That's I. That seems like a free. Deal. What happened? Sorry? I'm positing that it is Fies. Oh, ding ding ding. Boom! Good job. Boom! Yes. Yes. Um, yes. I mean, my normal Japanese trivia would call it like 3-5. But... <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, th- I think I think this is Fies. <laughs> Sango. I don't know. What a great bit. Let's cut that from the episode and save that for the Patreon. Mm, good idea. <laughs> I still feel like the Patreon is where you go to be patronized. No, no, Adam. You are where I go to be patronized. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, so Ag got so tired he's last sleeping. time that he's in the hospital. Oh no! This guy passes out more than Linus without his blanket. I don't know an episode. <laughs> I don't think there's an episode where Ag doesn't pass out. He needs like crackers and a lemonade or something. I worry about his or blood slices. sugar. Oh, yeah, exactly. Orange slices. <laughs> Hina, Hina should be carrying around like a cooler of orange slices for him. <laughs> this poor little boy, he, he tuckered out. He in the, he's in the sleepy boy hospital. Yeah, and the doctor rolls in. He's like, Date, check out these charts and pulls out a chest x-ray. Date examines it briefly. He's like, there's no core metals visible on this on this chart. Like, what what's going on? Nothing's wrong with him. Yeah, His he's fine. Tests came back fine, not full of, <laughs> not full of metals. You know, at the very least, he was just in a big fight. You'd think he'd have bruising or something, but apparently he's nope. perfectly okay. He's doing great. The doctor's like, yeah, just, uh, you know what? He's just real sleepy. He got hit with the sleepy bomb, and he probably just needs to wake up and he'll be all better. Which, uh, uh, speaking of coronavirus, is exactly how uh, our president is, uh, is basically treating this. It's just like, everybody just mm. take a real good nap and you'll be fine. It's probably nothing. Honestly, I'm impressed they took him to a hospital for once. Yeah. Then, then just slap a cold pack on his head and call it a day. <laughs> they get no orange slices and back teen. 
put some stuff on his back. I don't. That know. will come later in the episode <laughs> where true. he seems like he's been genuinely housed, but they do not take him to a hospital. Yeah. But uh, anyway, he could wake up at any time. Could be. Could be tomorrow. Could be a day from. Oh, he's up. What I miss. We go to Havisham Manor where Maki and everybody is just very dramatically sitting around doing nothing. And uh, Maki clears everything up by being like, I don't even know what's happening. There's some new metals. Uh, Who knows what's going to happen with those? But there's probably some yummies. Whatever, guys. Count the metals. One, two, three. What are we doing here? It's fine. Everything's completely under control. I'm not worried about it at all. Baby Onk wanders away with the coin tray to go fiddle near his fabric with the soccer ball. <laughs> I beg your pardon, young lady. And then there's some smooth pterodactyls. Just to make sure that I have not had an aneurysm or something, we didn't see those two last week, did we? No. Nope. Not at all. Okay, great. Because uh, what I almost did was research and watch last week's really? episode. But instead, I decided to just be very confused. Because they introduced those two guys like, hey, you you remember Man and Lady Smooth Pterodactyl, right? They're your, old, they're your old buddies, and they hang out on this building, and they talk about desires or something. One of them's purple, one of them's blue. I think Maki says that the yummies are doing what they're supposed to Yeah. at some they're- point. And I'm like... That's really confusing, show. Usually usually there's a whole like coin insertion and, and writhing mummy person, and then there's like some feeding of desires, and then they transform into smooth monsters. But no, we just have smooth monsters. They don't care about anything. Yeah. I mean, guys, say what you want about national socialism, at least it's an ethos. That that's a big Lebowski quote. I'm not actually defending Nazis. It's true. Uh, and now my headcanon for these two monsters is that they're played by Amy Mann and Flea. <laughs> <laughs> they were the Nihilists! Come on! I'm fine with this. I don't even care about that fucking movie. You know, Jesus. Okay, fine. Fine. Did I ever tell you I went to Lebowski Fest once and it was the biggest mistake of my life? I can't imagine that being good. There's a convention for the Big Lebowski? It is sort of this traveling thing that happens, and I went to one in Los Angeles because a friend had a couple extra tickets, and I realized that Big Lebowski is Rocky Horror for people who didn't go to drama club. It's just a bunch of dudes who really want you to know how chill they are, but in fact, they have no chill whatsoever. They were selling like quart-sized glasses of white Russian for like $25, which dudes in bathrobes were slamming back. Uh, The opening act was the Kyle Gas Band, which is just the half of Tenacious D who is not Jack Black. Yeah. And then uh, Jeff Bridges actually came out and did a set with his band. And my wife and I were like, this is going to be great. And then he was like, here's nine Eagles songs. And we went, oh, we wish we were dead. But he hates the fucking Eagles. It doesn't make Is it at any least, sense. Was there at least like really, Seven I, I mean, Bridges County and or, Eric, or any of the... Any songs about bridges? <laughs> What's, by the way, was, is that Gordon Lightfoot? <laughs> I'm not familiar. I would like to posit that although The Big Lebowski is a movie that I quite enjoy, I do not feel like a single film on its own is sufficient for an entire fest. Well, I mean, it's just what I mean. Oh, it was two nights because there was like a bowling alley event the night before. Yeah, it's just everybody watches the movie and like Rocky Horror, everybody shouts things, but like nobody was clever. So because it was just that's because the movie's already clever. You don't need like it. The Big Lebowski is not a film that's going to be improved by people shouting stuff at it. Uh, it definitely wasn't because like Tara Reid would come on and you just hear a guy go. Oh, boobs or something. And it's just like, oh, God, I've never I've never yeah, wished no. for death more. It was uh, it was terrible. And it makes me like the movie less, I will say. Oh, well, you should watch the G- the, the Jesus Bulls and that'll probably rolls or whatever. And that'll probably make you feel even worse. Jesus rolls. The title of the episode is A New <laughs> Greed, Void, Unstoppable Combo. Wait. Well, unrivaled combo, but also wait. They did a cool thing in the credits when they were showing footage from the movie that we may or may not watch. Let's go, Common Rider. Come on. The Uber's here. They they showed all the Heisei riders in reverse chronological order. So they went they they, they started like a with Doctor Who flashback. Went back 
backwards oh. until they got to Kuga. Well, no, they just like showed them each fighting, but it was cool. I liked it. They just like went through each of them in reverse chronological order. I was like, oh, neat. It's a rich tapestry. Anyway, uh, uh, they. <laughs> I enjoy this on so many more levels than you. It's true. It's weird that I'm part of this podcast on a week to week basis for years now, multiple <laughs> years. They leave the hospital and Pee Pants Part Two is sitting out there. Yeah, Dante and Goto take the the bill for AG. Yeah, yeah. I thought Dante's friend was doing him a solid, but apparently not. No. I'm so surprised that Sakata is still around at all. I like. I'm like, weren't you done last episode? We really closed the book on your whole storyline there. But he's got more. He's got more things to share with everybody. He's got like mm. the uh, Kyle at the end of South Park speech, except it's right. five minutes into the episode. But also, p- pterodactyls are dissolving people with black smoke. There's sinister oh, yeah. music and a shopping so center. Much death. And they land on the roof, and there's a bunch of work being done on the roof with random construction people. And I was really not expecting the female pterodactyl to just unhinge her jaw and let out all that black smoke that caused purple lightning on people, and then for the people to disappear. Like, there's a sequence of events that I really did not expect. There is Mm -hmm. so much death in this episode. I assume it's unless in next week, everybody's just like, hey, we're back and we're fine. And we all got presents. Uh, No, there is there's more death in this episode than in all of the previous episodes put together. (laughs) And I have to say, I am 100 percent here for this. It was a lot of like just indiscriminate death. Yeah, it's great. It's great. Four stars would watch again here for death anyways the monsters hit the the monsters hit the mall and they go shopping for souls uh back at the hospital uh p pants jr he's he's thinking a lot he's having a lot of thinks he's like guys you know what i was just thinking about what you said about when you try and do nice things but then still bad things happen and maybe like i'm like that monster or something anyways i hope i never work again Nothing good comes from listening to AG's dumb speeches. But it's all stuff, as Adam pointed out, it's all stuff we learned last week. Like, we're good here. But then (laughs) AG's like, hey, man, I know what you're talking about. Like, this one time I accidentally funded a civil war. And then everybody everybody stands up and goes, what? It's like, pardon you, you may have omitted some information the last time you told us about Explosion Day. (laughs) And he just, like, he just just rolls over that. He's just like, anyway. No, 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 AG. Open bracket, citation needed, close bracket. <laughs> they should just check his wiki. Um, What's happening? Yeah, like Pete Pants is talking about the time that it, that moth lady made it rain money. And AG's like, yeah, I made it rain money in a small country. And then it exploded. <laughs> but anyway, I figured out only only do as much as you can hug. I hate him so much. <laughs> I can't even when he I like that was a bit that I had to watch three times to just be like, wait, why is he doing the so big game that you play with? Like, how big is AG's reach? So big. He he's just like, I'm just going to throw my arms around the world like Bono. And then P-Pants Jr. is like, yeah, my arms do that, too. And then everybody else is like, wait, a civil war. What the fuck are you talking about? He's all like, well, as long as I'm only helping people within my reach, I'm pretty sure I can handle that desire. Like, that's totally manageable, everybody. Yeah, so big. Anyway, bye. Oh, a yummy, yummy sense. Hope hope you enjoyed my Hikaru no (laughs) go hair. I'm off. We go back to the mall, and uh, boy, oh boy, people are just fucking turning into smoke and dying. It's great. They show the exterior of like a 30 story building and just the smoke descends layer by layer yeah. and people scream. Ah, it's thousands of people per floor, probably. Absolutely. No news coverage, no cop, no anything on the scene. It's that weird thing that always happens in shows and movies like this, where it's just like whole scale destruction and everybody's just like, well, I guess that's fucking happening today. Guess I'm not going to work. Listen, Tokyo has been going through this shit for so long now at this point, Josh. If there isn't a giant robot fight or something, just they don't even show up. Mm-hmm. They don't even bat an eyelash. The whole crew rocks up and 
Date and Ag both transform, and then the boy Dactyl breathes fireballs again, like you expect, because previous <laughs> flying enemy types have definitely all breathed fireballs for reasons. I guess my question is, if you have the power to turn people into smoke and nothingness, why bother with, like, hey, I am carrying with me a machine gun, uh, but you know what? I think I'm going to fight you with this letter opener. Funsies. It, just funsies? Just like a cat yeah, playing with a dead mouse? It's just like, we're yeah, just going to do it. It's like, it's like <laughs> listen, I, I'm already dissolving some people over there. I could dissolve you, or I could, you know... Play this out a little. See how I, it, see where this goes. I feel that way every time AG Tato buzz at this point. Like I know <laughs> combos are stressful, but you could still type match. He's got tons of medals at this time. He d- he did technically didn't Tato ba he Tato Octopus Leg Co Ta- Tato Todd <laughs> Tato Todd <laughs> Yeah Yeah Like he gets body checked <laughs> by the the swooping Tyrannodon man and Oh they're erasers, by the way. They announced that because our our, oh, boy, our boys are like, uh, what is what is this? And they're like, we're I'm an eraser, you dummy. Why wouldn't you know that? I'm a movie with uh, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, Radon Chong. Hmm. And Ag's octopus legs <laughs> allow him to walk on walls like an octopus can. Yeah, exactly like that. Also, Date tells Goto to go help with the evacuation, which Goto does by <laughs> running into the building and telling the people who are running out of it to run. Run! Run, everybody! Run! But not that way! Another way! Away from the smoke! <laughs> to be fair, it appeared that all the people he was helping were running away from the exit. I guess he was helping. He wasn't hindering. <laughs> Whatever you do, don't panic! Just listen to the soothing sound of my screaming useless voice! I mean, he does literally do that later. He sure does. He's, bless him. And then he sees the death smoke and he just sort of contemplates it quietly. As it creeps towards him, <laughs> like, huh. full of dissolving bodies. Huh, dissolving smoke. I haven't seen that in a while. I would like to think that this is, uh, this is Goto's last, str- like, I think his <laughs> last, last thread of sanity has been snapped. Uh, and again, I appreciate watching a person have at least some kind of stunned, horrified reaction to horrible things happening. This is all Mm -hmm. I want. I feel like that is about the expression I would have on my face, just sort of stunned abject horror that I watched 90 people die like nothing. Pteranodon man force lightnings AG out of his transformation and then backhands Date out of his own. Then Date pulls AG under the stairs for a secret conversation. Uh, before yeah. before that happens, my favorite line in this episode is uttered by Boy Dactyl, which is "Metals and desires will once again turn to nothingness." Uh, to which my note was, "Okay, I guess <laughs> I guess that's what your deal is." Oh, and Lady Dactyl shows up to help out at this point. I li- I like her. She's got she's got like like a like a red boa thing happening. It's cool. Yeah. Adam, I'm going to agree yeah. with you on this. I saw Lady Dactyl, and I was like. Huh. She's all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're all right with me, Lady Dactyl. I might check you out on Deviant Art later. <laughs> okay, I wasn't actually sexually attracted to her. I just thought. Oh, me neither. Me neither. No, no, no. That would be weird if I was sexually attracted to Lady Dactyl uh, with her smooth <laughs> curves and pointy face beak. <laughs> Which face? You like a lady with two faces? Is that what you're saying? Mrs. Josh Dactyl. I like the sound of that. You know, your wife's going to be real sad if she listens to this. <laughs> she hasn't listened to a single episode of this bullshit. What are you even talking about? No. I'm glad your wife lets you watch the show still. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, really. Yeah. And then she makes me do my chores from the chore wheel because it's 1952. And we're the Lockhorns. Well, does she ever like walk into the room and sees that you're you're watching the show for the podcast and you just like turns around and walks right back out? I mean, no, I don't put it on the bed. This this is not big TV worthy. This is watched. Oh, hey now. This is watched in a tiny screen on my laptop as I'm taking uh-huh. notes that are like, I don't know what the fuck is this shit. I'm sure Corey will explain it. Moving on. I watch this on a 55 inch screen. Okay. It's trans sound. 
for the full effect. Mine are alternately 23 and 24 inches. Mm. We're, we're okay. Are we done whipping them out, everybody? Are we? Are we cool? <laughs> yeah. So the screaming crowd sees Lady Dactyl land and are like, "Oh, nope!" And then they block themselves into the building. And smoke. <laughs> Meanwhile, under the stairs. Yep. <laughs> Date says a real smart thing. So a doctor's first duty is to himself keep himself alive, and Ag's like, "I would be a very bad doctor." Stop trying to make me be a doctor, Dad. And then he runs towards the danger, <laughs> and then the two dactyls blow what appears to be about 4,000 9-11s worth of fire onto him. Cut to the couscousier. <laughs> right? They are closed for business. Come back tomorrow. We got some AG taping to do. <laughs> this is like that time Lupin the Third, like... Got sucked into quicksand, and then, like, the next scene you saw him in, he was just, like, on a bed, and somebody was tending to him, and I'm like, wait, 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 wait. Yeah, like, <laughs> what happened? AG, out of transformation, is pulling on some doors, and gets enveloped by a fireball caused by echolocation. <laughs> like, that you could, like, the ISS could see it, and be like, oh no, I guess the world's ending. <laughs> it's very large. There's so much fire! But no, he just needs he just needs like a sling and some band-aids. And some exposition. Date is like, hey man, I'm gonna just do some uh while I'm taping up your what should be your dead body, but just seems to be like <laughs> some cuts and bruises. Uh I'm gonna psychoanalyze you as well. Uh, it looks like you, you uh don't care whether you you live or die there, my friend. You probably value people's lives more than your own. And then uh oh you know what, by the way? I remember you. And then AG's like, okay, good night. And he goes, bye. bye. I'm going to go hang out with my, my weird bird friend. <laughs> and then Ankh's all like, hey, buddy, how, are you doing okay? And I'm like, whoa, when Ankh's worried about you, that's a bad sign. Yeah, Ankh's like, hey, uh, word on the street is you used to be a whirlpool of desire. And AG's like, yeah, yeah. But, I'm, but I'm not about that life <laughs> anymore. Cool. I'm fine now. And Ankh's basically like, eh, it's a good thing you're an idiot. So we go back into where the grown-ups are talking, and my note here just starts with, okay, this is a lot. <laughs> yeah. I didn't even bother to write any of it down. <laughs> oh. So one time, Date was in Africa, and this hot, young politician's son with a lot of money gave a lot of money to Africa, the country, and then a bunch of war people got it, and the everything exploded, country. and AG only survived because he was rich. Whereas Dante yeah. had to deal with the poor people. Now, before before that whole story is told, he starts to tell the story, and then Goto and uh, Hina are just like, "Oh yeah, hey, I remember that story. It was the story of a brave boy named that guy who like saved. He tried to save a girl and didn't, and blah blah blah." And Dante's like, "Yeah, that's what you think you know, but it's fake news." <laughs> that didn't happen at all. What happened was his stupid parents just gave him just gave him a lot of money and just rescued him. And then we cut to the hospital in Africa, parenthetically somewhere. It was a big it's a big piece of land, Africa. Who knows? Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, he's like fixing somebody up, Date is, and he looks out the window and he sees uh, he sees Ag being escorted out. By, like, a bunch of, like, Secret Service agents or whatever. Into his helicopter yeah. ride home. They'll have him back in Japan and he's soon. he's real, real sad. But, but the man in black is like, don't worry. We'll take you home. It's cool. Nobody cares about your emotional distress. <laughs> You're probably fine. You won't be. You probably won't end up being a weird underpants hobo. Hina doesn't like hearing any of this. And she's like, well, wait. So, like. But he's not. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with my special underpants boy? And and Date is like, yeah, well, you know, look, he's he's not totally empty inside. Although he's, 
I guess he's pretty dead inside. You know, it's like what the chairman or president always says. And then he just goes into a real, <laughs> a real like Homer Simpson level impression of Kugami, where he's just like, blah, blah, blah. I'm Kugami. Desires are an enemy for life. Cake, cake, cake. Look at my butt. Blah, blah, blah. And then Kugami's like, hello. He kicks down the door. <laughs> Kugami comes in and is basically that. <laughs> To, to be in Date's defense, it's a very good impression of what Kogami always does. Because Kogami's already an impression of himself. It's true. But I think this is the first time we've seen Kogami actually set foot in the couscousier. Or oh. really outside of his office. He's not a Kogami pad. He's Pretty a Kogami much. with a Satnaka who has a box. What's in the box? What's, What's in the in box? The box? <laughs> it's a birthday cake for a brand new greed. Uh, cake Watch 21. <laughs> Happy birthday, purple. Metal greed. And your weird yummies. Hooray. A yeah, Kugami's like, yeah, like what you said, AG used to be a good vessel, but not anymore. Happy birthday, purple greed. And then he starts explaining what the purple metals are. And I fell into a fugue state and I may not have woke up from it yet. No, no. He basically just said one thing and then moved on. He said that the metals are based on extinct creatures who exist on a conceptual yeah. level for modern people. So like they're made up and don't matter. Their desire is the void. Nothing good. He did say nothing in English to emphasize how much nothing he was talking about. <laughs> it was great. And then he cuts off Tara Reed's toe. <laughs> uh, Kugami is like, look, this is made of extinct animals. They love the void is the thing. And here's the problem. We think that A.G. no longer has desires in him. But if those purple metals like get real deep in his tummy, real deep where you keep your <laughs> desires, which is in your tummy. Then who even knows what could happen? He could go out of control or whatever. And it probably is not a thing we should celebrate with a cake. But Kugami got a Kugami. Apparently, Eiji can feel his cores somehow inside him. But it's fine. Don't even worry about it. It's all part of growing up. He's just going to do what he can do. It'll turn out. Cut to an amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> full of children full of children and when i think of amusement parks where people just go to have fun and ride rides and eat various fried things i think whirlpool of desire if only you were a pteranodon oh man okay when i when i go to an amusement park i fucking want some cotton candy like a lot though I mean, I want to sure. go on a roller. Man, I want to do all the stuff. Ah, oh, fun. I, I want to do everything. I guess it's not bad desires. Like, I feel like our dactyls. Look, our dactyls. Josh, there's no bad emotions. Okay. Like, I agree with you, Josh. When they said hovering <laughs> there in the air above this daytime fairground attraction, a whirlpool of desires, a maelstrom of desires in my translation. <laughs> I did not understand. Yeah, it's like, hey, mm. do, I assume Japan has a stock market, a stock exchange, maybe, or a casino and even a pachinko parlor or whatever the fuck. But these are just kids going on rides and shit, eating Dole Whips. It feels like two layers of like <laughs> meta text, like, ah, uh, why do fairgrounds exist? Because people want to go on rides. And then... Oh, people must really, really, really want to go on rides. I'm a pteranodon in a modern world that I don't understand. Oh, Hear me Cor out. Corey, I, now I want to see you. If there is a fringe festival where you live, I want you to do your one person show of the pteranodon <laughs> talking about people's desires. It's just you <laughs> on a black stage and you walk out and you're just like, oh, hey, I didn't see you all here. Why, that reminds me of the time that I... You ever th you ever noticed the fairs or maelstroms of desire? Let me tell you all about it. I was going to get so mad at you for asking if there's a fringe festival where she was and then I remembered she's not in Edmonton. There is a Victoria Fringe. It's like two blocks from my oh, house. Oh, yeah, no, I was just like... I was I, like, no, not one of the most famous French festivals in the world, certainly. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Anyway. I know lots of things about Canada. 
hear me out. What if the amusement park paid the Common Rider production company money to film there? No, no. Okay, actually, this brings <laughs> up a terrific movie that's terrible, but everybody should see regardless. Because there is an example of this happening in real life, and it is mind-boggling why they agreed to this. Jaws 3D. Okay. Have either of you seen this? Not no. for a long time, if I have. Wait, maybe. Okay, Jaws 3D takes place at SeaWorld. And okay. basically, it is a Jurassic Park type engine where they have built, we've built, it's Lewis Gossett Jr. He's the owner of the park. He's like, I've built this amazing new park that you can actually walk around underwater and it's all glass and you can walk under the ocean and observe ocean life. And I hope no sharks show up um, because Dennis Quaid, a.k.a. Roy Scheider's son in this timeline, is working here. And then uh, the shark shows up or like the shark's cousin or whatever, because the Jaws sequels get very weird with the idea that there's like inherited trauma in generations of sharks that want to go after Roy Scheider's entire family. But my point is, is that they could have called this park Oceanland or Flipperville or whatever, but instead it is legitimately SeaWorld with SeaWorld branding, which means SeaWorld paid for this to be in a movie where people go to SeaWorld and are murdered. That's just like this fairground where people are crop dusted by pteranodons and cease to exist. Practically the same, except this doesn't have Dennis Quaid in delightfully short shorts. Or like any Godzilla movie where various Japanese landmarks get destroyed. And in fact, sometimes there's competition for like who gets to be destroyed in this film. Are you saying the Empire State Building paid for the 90s? No, probably not. Somebody has to take responsibility. Also, I think the Twin Towers were still around back then. But the Empire State Building was the one getting destroyed. I don't remember. It's fine. The The purple metals like all of the death and destruction. And so AG wakes up. Yeah, he's got he's got a metal sense now. Just like everybody else. He got the purple eyes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And Ankh's yummy sense ru- runs rampant and he takes AG out and he knows like, Wait, no, you're super, super injured. I'm going to follow you. Uh, AG, uh, there's a recreation or history repeats itself because there's a little girl who Mm. is in absolute peril. He saves the girl because he has flashbacks and he's like, if there's one thing I am for, it's saving girls from explosions. Maybe I can make it work this time. And he does, but then he gets his by the whammy beam and he dehensions. Like, it didn't seem like she was actually in danger. She was kind of off to the side, huddled by a thing, and A.G. running towards her may have caused the Pteranodon to breathe fireballs in that direction. But when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Mm. Yeah, also, uh, when, you've, when you've experienced a traumatic circumstance, a lot of the time, you know, the patterns that you exhibit in life after that are attempts to fix that problem retroactively. Hina sees this and is very moved. She's like, Eiji's always reaching out for others, but who's going to reach out for him? Literally everybody else on this show constantly does that. Yeah. Just putting that out there. Hina, Hina has literally put enough bandages on him to fill the Egyptian exhibit at like the Royal British Museum. Well, she sees him get knocked out of his transformation. She's like, no, AG, and runs at him, and then Goto blocks her with his twig arms. (laughs) (laughs) He is. And and then AG basically like auto henchens. He goes into a fugue state, and his metals like henchen themselves. They come out of his belly button. They pop wide out. Pop, pop, pop. They block some fireballs. They're like, bam, bam, bam. P purple combos. Yeah. And turns into Plutyrannosaurus. Pur- purple pur- purple dinosaur. We got Tyrannodon Is- top, Triceratops middle, Tyrannosaurus legs. And I want you to imagine mm-hmm. what that should look like in your head. Like we've got a bird head, so that just kind of means the 
head is bird shaped, and we've got a uh, Triceratops bot body. And Triceratops are definitely known for their midsection, like where their front legs are. <laughs> and then we got Tronosaurus the legs, so they should be like some real thick glutes, like just real massive honkers for for carrying all that mass. And no. It actually means that sometimes he has wings and sometimes he has a tail that tail whips. I wanted him to turn into Figment from Epcot Center, mm. who is the most adorable little dragon and a good little guy. And Figment could have handled all of this with the power of imagination. <laughs> but instead, AG looks like a fucking freak. <laughs> okay, Pigment's just a fucking Lockheed knockoff. I'm sorry. Figment. Figment, you churl. Yeah, I said Figment. You said Pigment. Figment. You racist. I did not. <laughs> You're racist. You're racist. My question is uh, I see. why... I see we're having a presidential debate. Tag, you're racist. Oh my god. Would would our debates this year be that well spoken? Would that... Would there be a chance of that? No, it's going to be two old men wondering where their soup are. Is am I'm not anyway. going to watch it. No matter what. Oh no? Yeah, no. Weird! <laughs> The the only reason for, I, would, I would even watch highlights of the debate is just to like see Elizabeth Warren dunking on guys, and that's no longer a thing. So, happy International Women's Day. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. Uh, mm, okay. So yeah. yeah, my question is: Why does AG's transformation cause ice smoke? Because it's fucking cool. Is my answer? Because Ooh. because Corey dinosaurs <laughs> in the ice age. Durr. No. No. No, honey. There no? Were, I don't think there were... I saw the movie Ice Age, and I think there were dinosaurs. Was that with Squat? That little... Rat, yeah, with Squat. That, that rat <laughs> motherfucker? Scrunch? Yeah, and... I, I beg your Squirt. pardon, young lady! <laughs> Scrat? Squirt? Scrat. No, now I'm just naming That's clothing. It. Yeah. Yeah, and Ray Romano oh. is, is, is a hilarious mammoth. He fucks up the monsters real good, and you don't have to worry about... Ray the, Romano? He, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I'm gonna fuck you up now, guys, with my magic tail. Oh, let's hey. do an air battle. Like, you can fly, hey, I can I'm, fly. Hey, I'm, weir- I'm weirdly famous in Russia. <laughs> what? Really? They made a whole movie oh. about it. They sent. There's a movie about the producer of Everyone Loves Raymond going to Russia to oversee oh. the Russian version of Everyone Loves Russia. Um, <laughs> anyways. Also, the... The pterodactyl people are like, oh, you're a dinosaur too. Should we be friends? No! Yeah, he murders them real good. Uh, oh but, man, he is OP. But then he has got, uh, he's got, he's got a taste for murder. And he's like, hey, you know what else is great? Murdering everybody. I gotta who, say. No matter what. That during the battle, Iggy punches the ground, withdraws an axe, feeds it a coin. Yes. And then slides like a, a dinosaur head chomper down over it and it flips into a gun which i did not expect yeah then this looks when great. the actual enemies are dead and he goes ballistic on date he flips it back to the axe and it's like oh it, it was an axe i was not mistaken yeah it's it was both it transform surely you've seen enough common rider at this point to understand that weapons are never just one type of weapon what i did not expect is that when he tries to fire his ult with the gun it sings a song. <laughs> yes. So, so in the um in in the Common Rider Batride games, which are like um, warriors type games, like where you go around and beat up a whole lot of things all at the same time, uh, this form is uh, Oz's like ultimate attack, and it just wastes people. And it does do the little song when you do the final attack and shoot, and it's great. That's great. And I love it, and that's why I only play as Oz in those games. The end. So he's going to murder everybody, is what our old buddy Underpants guy is going to do. If only someone would reach out their hand to him. Ah. This is the part of the episode where, once again, I have to point out that Hina is also a superhero who is very strong. She has lifted cars. She has punched people so hard they go flying. She is very very strong and it wouldn't have killed us anyone for Hina to maybe just scrap with O's just a little just to remind everyone that she's real powerful but instead she solves this problem with hugging 
Josh, do you know why? Yeah. Because because fuck this. You know what the strongest part of Hina is? Oh God, her heart. I hate you. <laughs> okay, fine, fine. She's just she's just real strong, and I just I want her I want her to do strong person things again, and it's not going to happen. It makes me sad. Yeah, literally anyways, every time it happens. Yeah, <laughs> you say this. So she puts her physical form in the way. He's like, whoa, Hina. He comes back to his senses. She hugs him. He de-transforms, no longer in the thrall of the purple metals. And then we cut to Maki's room. Well, wait. Hang on, hang on. He does he he does his famous catchphrase, which is <laughs> I'm very ah, tired. And he passes out. <laughs> he passes right out. So Maki is currently dressing his doll in a little white suit. Nearby there's a little wardrobe of doll costumes. And then a little clothes hamper where the lab coat is stuffed. And then there's like a little lounge chair off to the side so the doll can sit in repose in the evenings with a book, maybe. Maybe a pipe, maybe a little a little sherry or something. Um, <laughs> some candlelight. You're almost doing the friendly giant opening. And there's a rooster on the wall named Rusty. <laughs> And it's about the same size as the giraffe, and I think the giraffe's like 14 <laughs> feet tall at least, but the rooster's the same size. <laughs> well, the giraffe plays the harmonica, though. That's important. And the chicken hey, doesn't have lips. what are you talking about? What is, what Friendly is Giant, sorry. It's a children's show yeah, you're not... from Canada that involved uh, some forced perspective and tiny props, so the story reader appeared to be giant, and then the puppets Why? were small. I don't think there was any force perspective. The BFG? I think there was just tiny stuff. Are you talking about the BFG? Sp- no, the friend, no, the friendly, the friendly giant. giant. Big Spielberg's best movie, the, the BFG. No, no, unrelated. Stop it. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Because I'm about to ruin the rhythms and rhymes that you're used to. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I'm, I, if, I'm funny? I, if I said big friendly giant, that was a mistake. No. It's the friendly the giant. The BFG? Yeah. yeah. It's... <laughs> It's very similar to Mr. Dress Up Josh, I, or some Fred Pepper. Josh, I will give you all my cell medals if you never do your Cockney accent again. Oh, it's a lovely <laughs> old day with BFG! <laughs> it's definitely one of the worst Cockneys I've ever heard. <laughs> but still better than Lin-Manuel's in Mary Poppin Returns. Mary Poppin? There's just, just one, one of them now? Mm. Just one, just a single pop in. Mm. They can only afford one. If you could do some Cockney rap, then I'd be able to compare. Oh, God. We are going on a summer holiday. That's <laughs> Swedish? What are they? I summer don't know. holiday what? is... I don't know. Okay. Is it... He puts a medal <laughs> in his head and the, movie, the episode's <laughs> over. And everybody's just like, no, oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, he puts a medal. He puts a coin in his head. And then he puts a coin in a candle, and then another Tyrannosaurus comes out, and he's like, this is fine. Okay, it's okay. Fine. No, this okay. Fine. So Kazari is there. He has the last purple core. He puts it into Maki's right. head. It turns okay. out that Maki had the other, like, four, so now he has five. A.G. has five. Mm. And mm. he inserts a cell metal into a candelabra for some reason. And then it's a, not even a, a candelabra. There's like three comes candles out. in it. A pteranodon. Yeah. 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 And that's it. And that's that makes yeah. total sense. And now everything's been explained. Yeah. We've seen <laughs> we've seen how the pteranodons were formed through now putting a cell metal into a candle, which famously yep. wants things. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, they want to be on fire or maybe not on fire. I no, know, I think a candle, candle wants nothing. <laughs> no, a can I, oh. I know I know for a fact oh. a candle wants you to be their guest. <sighs> okay, Lumiere was a person turned into a candle, so I don't think that applies. Your Honor, at the time that he invited Bell to be his guest, he was a candle. I rest my case. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, dun dun. So I liked the episode. I liked. I liked. Oh yeah, me too. I love. I like my smooth. Dactyl lady, she's real cool. Um, I like that EG accidentally funded a junta or whatever the fuck. That's what happens when your parents are rich. And was real cash about it. Yeah. I like that we're kind of in a conflict about who's going to be the next purple greed for some reason. 
Mm. It's like, mm-hmm. ooh, stakes. What a concept. Yeah. And uh, and I can't stress this enough. Murder. Death. Mm-hmm. Lots of death. Lots of men dead. Lots of women dead. Lots of children dead. Lots of people. Whatever, wherever they are on the spectrum, they are now all dead. Dead yep. people. Piles of black ash. No scene of them all reconstituting like like in a Sentai show. They're just gone. That is it. Maybe ne- who knows? Maybe next week they'll add water and they'll all come back. But no, uh, no. those people are are gone and forgotten. Oh, it's great! It's great. I need more. I need more of it. <laughs> you want more death and destruction in your common writer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm a I'm a simple man. I ask for very little besides the death of millions. <laughs> <laughs> okay then. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we did it. It was great. Mm. It was great. Woohoo. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you all for listening. <laughs> I'm Coriander Dickinson. You can find me on Twitter at Epsilar. I'm Josh A. Kagan. You can find me on Instagram at <gasps> Josh A. Kagan. I'm Adam Wasserman. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Gold Sarcasmian. Farewell. Yeah, bye. Bye. <laughs>